become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding hi everybody golden era bookworm here and in today's video we continue with the marvin eater interview series and listen to marvin as i interview him about his earliest training methods i have read many articles on marvin's early training and listen to the few interviews that exist out there on his earliest training methods because admittedly it is these early methods of training of the silver era legends such as Marvin Eater that really interest me and I also think it interests a lot of people. What was Marvin's foundation training like? I think this is one of the most important things to understand when trying to emulate these silver era legends. You know, just what did Marvin do early on in his career to develop what many consider to be superhuman Herculean strength? What was his secret? How did he start off and can we possibly emulate this, this process which he undertook at such an early age? As far as I know, Marvin would perform mainly chins and dips in the park and then ended up somehow training in Abe Goldberg's gym. But to me, when I've heard this in interviews and read this in, uh, you know, in magazine articles, this just sounded so oversimplified. So I decided to inquire more about his foundation training in this interview. Enjoy. You mentioned that at the age of 14 or 15, you started uh, weightlifting and training. Um, did you start off with bodybuilding or with weightlifting or with gymnastics? I mean, what was your, your training like very early on? Well, I did a little of everything. I remember I was able to do wide arm chins, 80 wide arm chins. Con I was able to do... Consecutively? Yes. Wow. I was able... <laughs> Let's see, what else? Oh, yes. Yeah. One arm chins. At a body weight of 198 pounds, I was able to do eight or nine with either arm. Oh, my Lord. That is very, very impressive. Yeah. Very impressive. Oh, my God. It is so good. <laughs> and I enjoyed doing it. And I loved working out. I also had a, a lot of endurance. I was able to do 500 parallel bar dick. In 10 minutes. Oh my goodness. That is very, very, uh, I mean, I don't know if anybody even to this day can match such feats. It's just, you seem to have both muscular endurance, endurance and incredible, uh, yeah, muscular strength and power for single lifts, as I said, and, and as well as for high repetition work. You seem to have the complete package. It's just uh, unheard of. But what about Earlier on, when you were 14 or 15, uh, were you training mainly with chins and dips then? Yes, I believe so. Then uh, it got too easy, so I started to uh, get pay some little kids nickels or pennies to sit on my legs. And I started to train with weight hanging on my body. Right. Doing that. So that's how you started I, the weighted, the weighted dips and weighted chins with just small children. Yes. Wow. Yes, I remember that. That's and great. I, I had to. I used to work out sometimes outdoors in the freezing cold, stripped to the waist, except for an undershirt. <laughs> you know, of course, uh, I wore pants, but. <laughs> <laughs> I was able to work out in the cold. Didn't bother me. That's great. I like doing that. That's great. I so plenty of surgery. Go on, sir. I, had, I don't even want to talk about that. <laughs> I survived the fall. <laughs> you, you mentioned you've you were training outdoors with uh, small yeah. children hanging off you. Um, was this in the park and stuff like that? In the park or at home? Yes, it was in a playground outdoors. Right, okay. And um, did you then progress from 
training outdoors? Uh, did you train at home at all, or did you progress to training in gyms after that? Yeah, I didn't have any equipment to train at home. Right. So I trained outdoors, and then finally I had saved up enough money to join the club, the Eastside Barbell Club. Right. So I'd have dues money and work out there in the club. And I enjoy doing that. Nice. It was very, very pleasant. And I enjoyed the lifting of the heavy weights. I really did. Yeah, you, I told you. Sorry, Don. 500 dips in 10 minutes. I, I was able to do that. You, you keep saying that you enjoyed it. That you enjoyed the training. Do you think this is a big, a big part of, of the secret to your success? I think so. Yes, hmm. I do think. So. You've mentioned earlier that in your youth you've done a lot of body weight chins and dips as well as weighted chins and dips. But how did you continue to progress on your chins and dips? Um, and what I mean by that is. You know, what were your reps and sets like, especially when you did weighted dips and chins, and how did you go up in weight on that? Well, I guess it was what I felt like doing that particular day. That, that's how it worked out. You make it sound so, so unscientific. You, you basically just felt like training hard and you just did? Is that it? Yes, I guess that's, <laughs> that was that's it. Wow. That was the end. Wow. I mean, I really enjoyed this interview with Marvin and listening to this interview with Marvin again, and I have several times, I just continue to learn so much from just picking up all these little things that he says. And I will admit that there is so much to learn and apply from what may seem such a simplistic yet very, very effective approach. As we have learned from Marvin's own words, Marvin's earliest training methods were not as simple as just performing a few occasional sets of chins and dips in the park. Instead, Marvin took this initial training very seriously and focused on the development of muscular endurance and power through the performance of bodyweight exercise. Just, it's just simple chins and dips. It's incredible. This is very similar, though, if you really start thinking about it, to the start of many bodybuilders back in the golden era. I mean, you can, you can name almost all of them, most all of them, like Arnold's a perfect example. They all started doing chins and dips in the park. That's how most people started doing the physical uh, culture, doing bodybuilding back in the day. And um, yeah, I mean, I find his, his abilities in both strength and endurance on the chinning and on the dipping rather incredible. Marvin states that he could perform 80 wide grip chins consecutively. That is non-stop. I dare anybody to be able to do that. Not just medium grip, wide grip. That is what I call both muscular strength and endurance. He could perform close to 10 one arm chin ups with either arm. Now that takes incredible muscle, tendon and ligament strength. He mentioned that he could perform 500 dips in 10 minutes. I mean, the wows, it just keeps wowing me. It's incredible. That is incredible muscular endurance. And he was able to break Jack LaLanne's record, I believe as well, uh, once doing a thousand dips in 17 minutes. The man had incredible muscular endurance. He, his joints were just so strong. It's, 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 it just marvels me every time. Leaves me almost speechless. What I find really interesting, though, is the form of progression that Marvin undertook to develop both, and I repeat, he developed both muscular endurance and strength using the chin-up and dip. He states that when he found chinning and dipping with his own body weight too easy, he began paying children nickels in the park to hang off him while he performed chin-ups and dips and slowly but surely began to progressively increase his strength and ability in these two very simple but effective basic movements.
Essentially, Marvin learnt to perform weighted dips and chins. The only way he could, he had no gym, he had no equipment, he had nothing except the means and his mind, and he used them brilliantly. He performed weighted chins in the park, which as many of you will understand, it's also a very, very hard thing to do. In my conversations uh, with, with Marvin, he has told me that he would have initially, for example, one child hanging off him weighing about 50 pounds, and later he would progress to having two children, so a total of 100 pounds, and eventually be able to perform sets of high repetitions with two kids hanging off him. That's just a very simple but effective form of progressive resistance training using your own body weight and eventually the, the body weight of other people. It's just a really intelligent way of getting strong using such primal motions such as the chin up and the dip. It's as primal as the squat. And many people will state that the push up or the chin up or both or, or, or the dip, all of these basic calisthenic movements, these basic body weight exercises are as primal as the squat and therefore much can be gained in your own body through strength and endurance of, of practicing these particular movements. And in doing so, he was able to develop both muscular endurance and strength using these very two simple exercises, the chin up and the dip. After becoming rather proficient and strong in the weighted dip and chin up, he joined the Eastside Barbell Club and would later train and learn from the likes of Abe Goldberg, who was known for his outstanding rib box development after, of course, specializing in supersetting the 20 rep squat with the pullover, which was a basic, a very basic program that was used by many, many silver era bodybuilders and, would, and was used even by professionals because they all obsessed about developing large rib cages and these exercises also uh, affect the internal organs, increase your metabolism, etc. The, these, this was just the standard really uh, in the silver era. And of course, that is another story for another day. Now, if you are interested in reading and learning more about how Marvin Eder developed his Herculean strength and endurance, then please head to my website www.goldenerabookroom.com where you will find a new ebook detailing his early training methods which endowed him with both muscular strength and endurance that he was so well known for. The ebook is also part biography based on the interviews I have had with him and will be the first of several ebooks covering the different aspects of Marvin Eder's training all available on my website, www.goldenerabookworm.com. So I do hope you have enjoyed this second video on the Marvin Eder interview series, which focused today on Marvin Eder's early training and how he developed the muscular endurance and strength in dipping and chinning as he was well known for. I will be following this video up soon with Marvin's views on the mind-muscle connection, his recollections of training during the Silver Era with the likes of Rich Park, his opinion on steroid use, and much, much more. So stay tuned. If you have enjoyed this video, please give the video a like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so for more content like this. Please support the channel through PayPal donations, becoming a patron, and by visiting my respective websites for merchandise and out-of-print bodybuilding books, which are now available as ebooks. Hope you have enjoyed the video. This is the Golden Era Bookworm saying bye for now. To take full advantage of my collaboration with Old School Labs, please visit their website and choose from their marvelous range of supplements using my code BOOKWORM12. And for an entertaining look at the history of bodybuilding's supplement industry, I would highly recommend watching Subs the Movie, which I have collaborated in, available at Amazon Prime and Vimeo.